What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to learn how to use pagination and cursors with the Instagram Graph API. It means that if the response limits the number of results that you can get back, then you need to paginate through them with next and previous buttons. In this video, we're going to create a web page and display our posts in pages of four. As you see here, I have my own Instagram account and I'm displaying the first four posts. And if there is a next page, meaning I have more than four posts, we're going to display a next button. Clicking on the next button, we'll hit the API and it will get the next four posts. Then we're not on the first page anymore, so we know that there's a previous page. Clicking on the previous page, we'll go back to the original first four posts. And then at the bottom of our page, we're going to dump out the raw response like we usually do so we can see the data from the API call that we made. You can see here I have the first four posts that are being displayed out and then the paging section of the response right here which allows us to get our next and previous pages. Let's start coding. Over in my blog code folder, which is on GitHub, github.com slash jstolpe in my blog code repository. Download it there and you can follow along. I'm gonna go into my Instagram Graph API folder and in here, we are going to create a paging.php file and then open that up in Sublime. The first thing we wanna do is include our defines file. This is what the defines file looks like. We have our app ID, secrets, redirect theories, endpoints, access token, page ID, and Instagram account ID. If you'd like to see how this defines file gets generated, where we get all these IDs from, then you can go check out my Instagram Graph API playlist and start from the beginning. For this video, I'm assuming you guys have already gone through those videos or know how to get these things on your own. Now that we have all of the credentials we need to make an API call, we're going to make the API call using curl. In my hashtags.php file, I have a function make API call. I'm going to copy this and paste it right below the include statement. Now we have our make API call function. For this, we are going to remove the post. We're just doing a git request here. We open a curl call. We set the curl options right here, pass in the parameters we want, get a response back and return it. Now that we have the ability to make an API call to the endpoint of our choosing with the parameters that we want, we are going to create ourselves a function that will get ourselves, we're going to create ourselves a function, get a page. This will return us a page of results with the limit we have specified. First parameter we need is the Instagram account ID. We need an access token, followed by the limit of results that we want to get back per page. Then we need the cursor type. Cursor type is either before or after and that just means previous or next page, along with the cursor, which is a key that will allow us to get those results back. The endpoint we want to hit, the structure, is as follows. Graph.facebook.com, the version, the user's Instagram account ID, slash media. So we need to create ourselves a variable with this endpoint. I'm going to call this users media endpoint. We're going to head over to our defines file, and we're going to get our endpoint base. Our endpoint base is simply the first part of the structure you need for the media endpoint. Then we're going to concatenate on the IG account ID, which is coming in through this function. And finally, the endpoint we're trying to hit is media. Next, we need to specify the parameters we want to pass along to this endpoint. And the first thing we pass along is the fields. This specifies what we want to get back with each post. We want to get back the ID of the post, the caption for the post, the media type, which is will be image or video, the URL to that media, permalink, which is a link to the post, the thumbnail URL, the timestamp, which is the time it was created, and the username. Next, we're going to specify the limit, which is also passed in through this function right here. The max limit for getting a user's posts, I believe it is 10,000. Whereas for if you're trying to get comments, which is a different endpoint, you have to specify a max limit of 50. Otherwise, pagination and cursors act the same way for all the endpoints. There just might be a different limit on that endpoint. And last but not least, we need to pass along an access token. That is also coming in through this function. Now that we have our endpoint and our parameters set up, we can call our make API call function. And this is where we actually get the user's media. Pass in the endpoint, 
get request, and then we pass along the parameters. Last but not least, we want to return that. Now that we have our get a page function and our make API call function set up, let's get the user's first page. Here, we're going to pass in our Instagram account ID from our defines file as our Instagram account ID. Then we're going to pass in our access token, also from the defines file. Then we're going to pass in the limit, the cursor type, and the cursor. Now, a few of these things are not defined yet. The limit, the cursor type, and the cursor. These three things right here, we're going to check for in the URL. Right after our include statement, we're going to check for some get variables. What we're doing here is checking for a limit in the URL. If we have a limit specified, then we will use the limit specified. Otherwise, we're defaulting to four. Next, we're going to check for the cursor, which is like a code that will allow us and authenticate us to actually get the next page. If it's not specified, we don't have a cursor, and we will just get back the first page with the access token. Same thing with the cursor type. The cursor type is going to be either before or after, meaning previous page or next page. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first, we just want to get the first page and display it out. Now, when we call our get a page function, our limit cursor and cursor type variables are all coming from the URL. If they're not in the URL, we default them. We are at a good place where we can actually check if we're getting some data back. So we're just going to print out our user's media, and we should be getting back four posts that are on the first page. Localhost, blog, code, Instagram graph API, and we're going to click on our paging.php file. Looks like we're getting some data back. We got posts right here, 0 through 3, 0 index, so we got 4 back, and our paging array in the response. Now that we know our functions work, we want to display this page out and display a next or a previous button if they exist and style it up a little bit with some CSS. Here we're displaying out a list of each of the media results that came back in the response. In our case, we have four that came back because we limited it to four. So we're going to create a list item for each of the posts. The first if check we're going to do in here is to check for the media type. This will tell us if the media type is an image, carousel album. If it's not either of those, then it's a video. And we have to put this if else in here because we need to either display an image tag or a video tag. In either case, the source is the same. We're displaying out the media URL. It'll be a, you know, a PNG up here or a MP4 down here. You can check that we're doing things great. Open up another tab. We gotta turn off our die first. Reload this tab and look at that. We got an image, an image, a video, and an image, and that is four posts. Now we just need to get some styles on this stuff. So let's do our pages list style. I'll display that as block. Let's get some default text on the body because default font family is gross. Let's get some Helvetica going. Then we have our pages list item, which is each of the posts. The last class we have is our pages media, which we'll just do 100% for any image or any video that is displayed on the page. Double check that. And there we go, looking a little better. Our four posts are nicely displayed next to each other and the media, image or video, is being displayed with a border. After our image or video, we want to display out the caption, which is the actual text of the post. Then we want to display a link to the post that will take the user to the actual post on Instagram. Last but not least, we want to display the time it was posted, which is simply the timestamp array key. Check that out, and there we go. We have our captions, our link to the post, which should take me to the actual link on Instagram. There we go, and when it was posted. However, we do want our captions to be displayed with the correct spacing, just as they are on Instagram. So we need our handy dandy N2L, sorry, NL2BR 
function. Refresh our page, there we go. Now it looks good. Now that our list is complete, we're going to display out the raw response in a nice text area at the bottom of the page. Here we've displayed out the entire response that we're getting back from the API in a text area, and we're going to give this text area a little bit of styling right here, raw response class. We're going to give this a width of 100% and a height of 600 pixels. Refresh our page now. Down at the bottom, here we go. We have our data, the four posts that are being displayed on the page, along with our paging array. Now, for the most important part of this video, the topic of this video, we're going to display out the next and previous buttons up at the top of our page, right above our posts. We're going to create ourselves a nav container, which is where our next and previous buttons will live. Nav next is going to be our next button, which if there is a next button, it will float to the right. That way that it will sit on the right of the screen. We don't need one for the previous because the previous will automatically be on the left of the screen. So in our nav container, what do we do? We hop over to our raw response data and we look at our paging array. This paging array, it contains a next, which means that there is a next page. This URL can be hit directly in a browser to get the next page of four results. The cursors are the before and after cursors. We're not just going to hit this next URL because we want to recreate it ourselves, and we can recreate it ourselves by using the cursors before and after. As you see, this cursor for after is in the next URL. So we're going to recreate this URL, which just happens to be the URL that we create when we call our get a page function. As long as we pass in these parameters, which we are going to be getting from the URL string, we can get the previous and next pages. First thing we're going to do is try and display the next button. We can display the next button if the paging next array key exists. If use media paging next exists, we're going to display a next button. We're checking for the paging next. If this exists, we'll display a next button. If it does exist, we want to display an A tag, and the text is going to be next and a little right arrow. Now we need to put together the actual link that the user will be taken to when they click the next button. First thing we do is we want to target PHP self, which is the current page we're on, our paging.php file. Then we want to start putting on variables. The first thing we're going to do is append a cursor type. Since we know this is the next, the cursor type for next is after. Then we need to specify the actual cursor. After the cursor, we're going to specify the limit, and the limit is just going to be our limit variable. And that is the href for our next button. Again, we're getting php self, which is our paging.php file. Then we're depending on the cursor type, which is after. It's either after or before. Then we're actually specifying the cursor, which is the cursor key, and it's coming from paging after. Last but not least, the limit, which is whatever limit is being passed in to the page. So we're going to refresh our page, and of course we get an error. I'm going to find index after. What do we do wrong on our next button? Index after. Oh, paging cursors after. That's the that's how we get to that variable. Paging paging cursors after. That was the missing array key. All right, refresh our page. We have our next button right here. Hover over it, it's going to paging.php. Cursor type equals after. Cursor equals the next cursor with a limit of four. Clicking on this, it did send us to the page up here in the URL, but it still displayed the first page. I believe this is because we did not update our get a page function to account for cursors. And the parameters that we're sending along to this endpoint, we need to also send the cursor type before or after, like this. So it's going to be either after or before, just like that. We're going to check for those two things, and if they exist, then we will append them on to the user's params. Just so you guys can get a visual on this, we're going to display out the user media params so you know what they look like when there is a cursor type and a cursor. 
now since they are in the URL. If I refresh the page, we should see the after. So let's get rid of that and refresh the page, and we should see our second page of Instagram posts. Now the only problem is we don't have a previous button. Back to our code, it's a very simple copy and paste. In this case, we're checking for paging previous. And on our previous page, we should see previous and next now, just like this, look at that. So if previous exists, we want to specify before and use the before token. So we update our a tag, we don't need the class next. We want previous on the left side of the screen. Cursor type in this case is before. And we echo out the paging cursors before token as the cursor. Update the button to be a back arrow and say previous. Refresh this page, we should see a previous button. There we go. We see our previous button, clicking on it should take us to the first page of results. Get rid of the previous button since we're on our first page. And now we have our previous and next buttons working for a limit of four. And clicking next a few times, you see that each page is four long. And the next and the previous buttons work. One thing to note is that you can specify whatever limit you want since we are passing it through the URL. I'm gonna specify a limit of Let's just do a limit of two. Limit equals two. Now you see I get one page of two. Clicking on the next button, we'll hit our get a page function with the limit of two, and we'll get the next two posts, and the next two posts, and the next two posts, and we can always go back. And that is gonna wrap up our Instagram Graph API pagination and curses video. It was the most requested by you guys. There was lots of questions on pagination for the Instagram Graph API. So I hope this helped you guys out. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.